Hello and welcome to another edition of Ambient Talkie, a show where we dive into some weird and wacky equipment and wonderful, call it whatever you want music. I'm Andy from Two Round Robins and I hope you're ready for some comparison within the Manom Norns family. So quite a few of you asked me if you should get a standard Norns or a shield. Some of you are already shield users thinking of jumping to the standard Norns bandwagon. So with this episode, I'll try to explain my own personal experience with this lovely devices and hopefully get you some info that will help you decide in the future. So just to make things a tad easier, Let's talk about what is the same within these Norses. Both shield and standards are functionally the same. As of writing this episode, any script that works on standard Norse will also work on the shield. Grids such as these and grid-based devices integrate the same way on both type of these devices. So basically, you shouldn't worry that much when it comes to processing power. Although you might have a Raspberry Pi such as this hooked up to your shield, like a Raspberry Pi 3B+, it is quite similar to the computer module 3 Plus that is hooked up to the standard NORS, at least when it comes to raw processing power. So question here is, if they are functionally the same and can be run on a similar specs, where are the differences that may persuade you to go for a full standard NORS? Now before we jump to the main differences, as far as I understand, Manom came out with standard NORS around 2018. Following the open source philosophy, they came out with a NORS shield a year later basically making the Norns ecosystem a bit more affordable. They since discontinued the shield as a DIY kit, but because of the open sourceness of the whole project, you can quite easily source the materials yourself and build one. I have done so with this one. So right off the bat, we can see that the shields are more in the DIY aesthetic where you can customize uh, you know, your norms by adding your own enclosure, hooking up a Raspberry Pi, like Raspberry Pi 3B or 3B Plus or 4B. And you can easily add storage by uh, you know, adding a larger SD card that's more or less easily accessible. So yeah, the difference therefore kind of lies in a few quirks that the shields have as opposed to the standard. So just by looking at the build quality, for me, the standard kind of takes the cake. With its minimalist and almost brutalist design, it's like a musical computer that's disguised as a piece of contemporary art. And I think that even by in its minimalist look, it looks quite unique from your other sound devices. Well, with the shield, uh, it does offer an easier way of customizing the look and feel of your device. Some of you might remember that at the beginning I had the usual plastic um, white enclosure, and then I changed it to a very DIY based wooden enclosure before settling down on this lovely wooden enclosure from Centoys. I did something similar to the fully DIY build here, although I went very minimalistic with just the uh, upper and bottom panels, and these panels can therefore be also, uh, you know, changed, just adding a bit of fun to the whole project and the whole experience, I guess. So when it comes to the feel of the unit, the standard also kind of takes the cake here. The encoders here are so damn smooth uh, that make any menu diving really easy and really fast, you know, uh, as it is. So this is great as opposed to, let's say, when we talk about these encoders on the shield, which aren't bad. But again, I do have a bit of problem with the jumpy feel here, especially when it just kind of jumps without, you know, really moving much. So, you know, I think this is just the DIY aesthetic when it comes to it and they really went all in when it comes to the feel of the main 
unit, which is great. Now, another thing that I should mention here uh, is this. I got Norn Standard as a B stock because they are notoriously difficult to buy one when they, you know, come live uh, at, you know, a batch that Monom releases and stuff like that. So, you know, in, in, a, min in a minute or even less, most of it sold out. So I, I wasn't that lucky, but I got a B stock that was, uh, you know, available. Now, one thing that I should mention here, there's like this, um, I wouldn't really say stain, but it's like, you know, oxidation or oiling or something like that. And it just like, it creates this patina look to it which uh, you know can be uh, you know can be quite sour on the eyes but uh, maybe I'll learn to love it in the future so you know now that we kind of dwell delved into the whole uh, look and feel of these lovely devices let's talk a bit about connections Shield and Standard also differ in their own connectivity. Standard has a few of these quarter inch jacks here at the top of the device, basically taking, um, you know, stereo signals out and stereo signals in. And it also has like a little headphone out here with its own driver, which again, it's far better when you're just listening to, through the headphones. You know, you can still do this with the uh, with this one here, but uh, you know, you're gonna lose a bit of volume when you when you want to hear something. So this is very much better when it comes to the shield one. Now the standard also has like four uh, USB slots, and one of this is a dedic is dedicated for your USB adapter, such as this one. So it's very similar to how uh, Organelle does it. Um, when we talk about when we talk about the shields, however, uh, we can see that they do have standard uh, eight inch um, inputs and outputs from here. So basically, uh, you, you, that's more or less it's simple. This this thing at the bottom here it's just from the Raspberry Pi. So basically, it's just it's a DAT connection here. But mostly, we're talking about these two inputs and also um, the amount of USB inputs and Ethernet input uh, that it's hooked up to your main Raspberry Pi that, like I said, can be anything from 3B to 4B. So, you know, now looking at the practicality of, of the whole thing, this thing here, um, the smaller 8-inch jacks, that are more or less simplified with just, let's say, a normal little aux cable can be quite beneficial for portable sessions and stuff like that, you know, because you just basically hook it up and it works fine and that's it. But when we are talking about portability, there's one advantage that the standard here has, and this is its own battery. So you can see that the Norns uh, standard is booted up works absolutely fine and it has no connections as of now that's because it has an integrated battery that you can basically uh, if we go to the main menu here uh, we can see that it's now on 89 percent and this is how much um, i think it's milliamps it it's currently taken for um, this script so it's like this script is particularly 43 percent CPU heavy and it's just like taking this amount of milliampage. But you know, I was surprised that it was able to hold at least like two hours of a more CPU heavy script with a grid connected to it. So, you know, at that time it's just kind of it works fine for shorter sessions and something that it's really great if you just take it out, say, for, let's say, a few hours and that's it. So it, it, some of you might be asking, okay, but like, what's the battery power on this? Well, you know, how long does it last? It's really difficult to say. And that's because it really depends if you're using Wi-Fi uh, on the thing, if you have a grid connected, if you have a CPU heaviness of the script. And if you have any other devices, such as controllers connected to the thing, everything will drain the battery, obviously, a bit faster. 
But, you know, for a quick session, for something that you just want to take outside for like an hour or two or, you know, have it on, on the bed without connected to anything, it works really, really well. So, you know, from that point, I think it's great. Now, if you want to be portable with a shield, which again, going by its size, it should be quite easy. Uh, you just need a power bank. And the same thing if, you know, if you want it to extend your battery life uh, outside when you want to have it fully portable, you know, always have a very good power bank that, you know, gives these devices enough power and it will work fine for a couple of more hours. So, you know, you should be, you should be fine when it comes to that. Now, you know, let's 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 try to talk a bit about the audio quality um as i mentioned these things are functionally the same however there's a bit of a difference when it comes to the whole audio codec so to my understanding the 2009 version the 2019 sorry the 2019 version of the pcb that is here has a different codec and a different audio chip that this one here which is a from 2021 version. However, this is, it is to my understanding, and I could be wrong. So, you know, if I'm wrong, just tell it in the comments. But the chip that's in the standard norms is basically the same one that is here. So, you know, I tried um, different scripts, different audio files, and I recorded them and tried to, you know, to really feel if there is any significant difference when it comes to the whole audio quality of the thing, but I wasn't really able to pinpoint any major differences. So for me, they are pretty much the same, but you know, I make lo-fi ambient music, so take that with a grain of salt. The one thing that I should mention here is the problem with the noise that may come in the shields. So one of the differences between this and this thing and this thing basically is that the wi-fi antenna might interfere with the audio quality or not the audio quality but the audio itself as it it can become quite noisy this was a huge difference when i used a raspberry Pi, uh, raspberry pi 4b as whenever i turned on the wi-fi it would have the most annoying fix noise imaginable just by like interference noise this would make any sort of syncing with ableton link or any coding session somewhat unusable so i managed to drastically improve that uh, the signal by changing the raspberry 4b with a 3b version you can still hear that noise, but like it's fairly rare and far, far more manageable. So it doesn't really become an annoying issue. Now, how the CM3 Plus here is used within the standard, there is basically no issues with interference and Wi-Fi. So if you have a Wi-Fi connected and you're doing some stuff like, let's say you're syncing up to Ableton Link or you're syncing up different noise devices and stuff like that, um, there, it's quiet. It doesn't have any sort of noise that would be considered enough to be very noticeable or really noticeable. I, I wasn't able to notice. It works fine. It's very lovely. And that's it, you know. Um, so this is one of the main differences that I was really looking into it is just like having the, uh, how the Raspberry Pi sits on the Wi-Fi antenna, how this is integrated is a bit different at least i think so looking at this you might be wondering why did i jump and got a standard even though functionally it's the same as a shield and do the casing and the integrated battery really make that of a difference that's worthy of a quite a hefty price tag and my answer to this is connected to the reasoning I made when deciding to jump onto the standard bandwagon. So I bought Shield secondhand from Reverb and I loved it. But it had one major problem with noise. Even when the Wi-Fi was turned off, there was some persistent noise that, you know, kind of got into the whole thing and I wasn't able to pinpoint the exact problem. 
So after a bit of googling, a bit of you know forum posting, whatever, I decided to reach to Monom directly, which in hindsight is a rather wacky thing to do since I'm basically asking for help on a second-hand unit. However, Dan Dirks from Mon Monom really took his time to help me get the shield sorted out, even though Monom is not making a penny out of this, and to me that really showcased the core philosophy in action. The philosophy that we're, or at least I'm not used to, in some other audio companies. Monom really sticks to the core ideas of open sourceness, their unique product line and community that you find on the Lions forum. So my answer is, I got myself a standard norms simply with the purpose of wanting to own one and at the same time supporting the people that are involved in the making of these unique products. So in conclusion, should you get a standard Norse? I don't know. <laughs> I got it. I'm happy with it. It's really up to you if you see the value in it or, or not. I think that Hopefully you got some differences between the units that might help you decide in the future whether you should stick to the shield or get a shield or just jump straight into the standard norms bandwagon. One last thing that I should mention uh, is to be sure to check out Danke Auto's Shield XL line which is an interesting uh, mixture of a um, shield that's basically enclosed within a, an enclosure that's far more in, in keen with uh, the standard norms. So, you know, take a look at, I'll, I'll drop a link down below just so you can maybe check it out. Maybe that's something more in your way of using it. The other thing is that, um, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me, there's always Patreon where I upload stuff like, I don't know, sample packs, audio files and additional goodies. You can join it for only like five, five bucks a month. Also, if you want to connect with me, uh, I, I do have a Discord link that you can always give a follow and DM me on Instagram if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Uh, I, I don't buy it. And like usual with the YouTube shtick, like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, you know, do all that cool stuff when it comes to YouTube. But most importantly, um, you know, do have a great rest of your evening, morning or afternoon, whenever you might be watching. Um, and do take care. Hope it was a great one.